Hello, this is a training video on how to set up and edit existing inventory items through the Excel import and export process in WDQ. Create a new item, which we've covered in previous training videos. You click Menu, Create Now. Before creating inventory items in Excel, I always recommend creating one item in the website so that you've populated different fields such as supplier, inventory type, category, lead time, and the various conversions. This is important because when importing the Excel file, everything has to be formatted and spelled correctly. If it is not, the file will not import. We're going to use an existing supplier that has some inventory items set up for this demonstration video. To export out of supplier, click Menu, Export Inventory Rules. Well, you will select Interlock, who is a hardware supplier. Click Yes, Enable Editing. Here you'll just see that this file simply matches what is on the website. Supplier, categories, inventory items, supplier number, internal numbers. If we hide some of these columns right here, you'll see the stocking, costing, and purchasing conversions, and then also the inventory rules. Now, inventory rules are the logic behind the system. That tells you when to use an item based upon how a order is configured. To create a new inventory item, we will come down here and simply drag and drop these values. So if you're creating 100 items, you just simply drag and drop this down to create 100 items. This is why I recommend creating one item first because you are guaranteeing yourself that the division, the supplier, the category are all spelled correctly. Let me unhide these columns right here. We will drag and drop these values right here. And then we will type in a description. We'll say right hand casement dual arm operator. We'll put in the supplier part number. We'll put in our internal number right there. We'll make that four weeks. When creating a new item, you must leave this uh, column D value, the inventory ID value, blank. That is a system-generated number when you import this uh, when you import this file. We're going to go ahead and hide some of these columns now, so that we have more screen space to work with. So because uh, we're using the same conversions. We'll just drag and drop that right there. Let's say you are using a formula to calculate some of these different conversions. On the website, the system will do the math for you, you know, like you know, converting uh, feet to inches or an extrusion that's 16 foot long to feet, which is then converted to inches. It'll do all that math. Here in Excel, you're going to have to do the formulas. I'm just going to do a simple formula, some, like 12 times 3.5 right here. So I calculated out to 42. When importing the Excel file, it'll not import if there's a formula in there. So the way around that is to click copy and then paste value. So that's the Excel value that says one, two, three. You can see that kept the value of 42, but the formula is now gone. So that allows the file to be importable. Because these are all the same conversions, I'm simply gonna click copy and paste. Right there. Now we're going to scroll to the right and we're going to do our rules. So here we had a left hand casement dual arm operator. I'm just going to simply drag and drop all that right here. Unit width greater than 25.625. That stays the same. Hinge equals washable. That stays the same. What changes is operation equals right. Section values are uh, and statements or or statements. To make an and statement, you keep it in the same section. So to use this right hand dual arm operator, operation equals right and unit width is greater than 25.625 and hinge equals washable. If you put them in a different section, such as like section two, 
that becomes an OR statement. Those are rarely used, but uh, this is an explanation of when to use them. So something that's important, uh, as we've mentioned before, is words like operation, equal, unit width, hinge. Those have to be spelled and formatted correctly. Um, so we're looking at our website right here. These are the inventory rules. You have to spell them with the same capitalization, spacing, etc. And these are the operators. So less than or less forward slash equal, less greater forward slash equal. You have to match the spelling and capitalization in order for the system to import the file. So we have got, we went ahead and set up these items and it's ready for import. We'll click save. Some of these columns are still hidden. That's okay. We, we don't need to unhide them in order to import. Once again, to create a new item, let's try to unhide these cells. To create a new item, this value must be blank. You can export out a file and not create items and just simply like edit pricing or part numbers or lead time over here. So just click save. Let's click now, we're clicking menu, import inventory rules. Click open. So if we go to interlock hardware, go to the second page, you can see our right hand dual arm operator imported right there. If we open it up, supplier part number, internal, the category, everything that we assigned, the pricing, and even the rules were created right here. So that is how you create a new item through the Excel import process. So the main keys right here, number one, create your first inventory item on the website so you can get spelling and formatting correct for most of these values. Number two, when creating an item, you must leave that inventory ID value blank because that's a system generated value. The third thing is everything needs to be, um, any inventory rule conversions, those need to be uh, formatted and spelled out correctly. And to edit items through Excel, we, let's say you have a price increase from your supplier. You can just simply export out the inventory rules. We'll select that same supplier. Let us hide some of these columns so we have a better screen to work with. Let's say there is a 5% price increase. I could just simply click equals this times 1.05 or four, we'll say. Simply drag and drop that all down there. So right now we're in value or uh, formulas, which the system will not uh, use. So we'll just come over here and we'll click paste values. We'll click paste values again. Oh, we're going to copy these values right here because these are the correct values. Paste values, paste values, and then we would save it and then re-import it. And that's how you can quickly adjust your pricing. Uh, there is another way in the system to do it. This is all, uh, one of two methods. So that's how you edit an existing inventory item. Thank you for your time.